We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all, but to match with Indeed. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. So ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so that you can connect with candidates faster. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash manifest. Just go to indeed.com slash manifest right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash manifest. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to do we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US. They are the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, their award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash manifest, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash manifest now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash manifest. Manifest with Tori D. Simone. I'm your host, Tori D. Simone. Happy Monday. I cannot believe it is the last Monday in August. August truly does slip away like a bottle of wine. It just went so fast and I can't believe it. Like next week is Labor Day weekend, which means that this week is my last winding down week of my studios down here at the shore. It just goes so fast and every single summer it just gets faster and faster and it's so wild, but I'm really looking forward to the fall. You guys know that I'm like, keep saying that I'm excited to like slow down a little bit, Um, but I'm also just looking forward to a lot of podcast episodes that I have coming out that I'm really excited about. Um, I want to do an episode all about what I've learned this summer. You guys have had a lot of interest in... um, like going through like me going through a breakup, which I don't know if that's flattering or not, but um, there's a lot to still be said about like me being, you know, single in like my mid 20s. Like that feels really bizarre. Um, but I also think it is like one of the best things that could have happened to me. So I have a lot to talk with that about that I'm excited for, um, you know, for my future and, and things coming up. But Besides all of that, I am really excited to talk about today's topic, which is, oh boy, it's kind of, it's kind of layered. There's kind of a lot and it was hard coming up with the title for this episode because I just don't think combating burnout really addresses it completely. Here's what's been going on. I have been so exhausted And I don't want to say it's like depression because I don't feel depressed. Um, I don't feel sad. I don't feel hopeless. I don't feel anything like that. I just feel exhausted, which is why the word burnout just comes to my mind and makes me think like that's just probably what this is. Um, And I've been so tired to the point where I will get up in the morning, do what I have to do, which is normally like go to the studios and then I will come home and I will either lay in bed and doom scroll until it's time to go to bed or I will go to the beach and like sleep on the beach or I will go up onto the rooftop deck and sleep on the rooftop deck 
or I will just do the bare minimum of work that I need to do and then just like crawl into bed. Like I will just be lounging around um, after doing what I absolutely have to do, but then nothing beyond that, like no extra work, like no nothing, which is very rare for me. Normally I find that I'm really creative and I love that. Like I always want to create a podcast episode or I want to work on something for my businesses or um, I, I just like doing creative things that stimulate my mind specifically. So for the past two weeks, I've really been very down. Well, not the past two weeks, but for about two weeks um, in the beginning of August, I felt very drained is probably the best word, just very drained, very exhausted and very like I'm only doing what I have to do. And then the rest of the time I just need to like be. And it could be for a million reasons. I'm sure we all could think of like five reasons why that could be. And I agree with you that they are probably all valid. But the the point of what I'm saying is I have been exhausted. And here's what I've learned at the end of the day, every single time that I'm exhausted and let myself rot in bed. I feel like shit afterwards. Okay. I have never had a day of rotting where I have felt amazing afterwards. There definitely have been days, and I'm sure I've said it on this podcast, like now that I'm saying this out loud, I feel like last week I was like, oh yeah, I rotted and I felt better. There's been days where I feel like, okay, I rotted and I really needed to do that. But have I walked away from those days feeling infinitely better? No. And I've never felt better. Like I actually feel the opposite. I feel like shit after I rot and I don't do anything. Like I just feel like crap. And this was about like, you know, a week, week and a half, two weeks of doing the bare minimum of what I had to do and then just rotting the rest of the day to the point where I started going on YouTube at the end of the day and searching up. Andrew Huberman optimized morning routine. Like that's how much I was like, okay, I'm sick and tired of feeling sick and tired and I'm ready to feel good. I I want to feel good. I want to get control of my stress, of my burnout, of whatever I'm feeling. Like I'm ready to move on from this because it doesn't feel good anymore. And I'm ready to have my energy back. Like I'm 26 years old. Why don't I have energy? What's going on with me? Like what what is happening? And essentially um, what I've learned and tested for the past now couple weeks after this has passed is that what I was doing every time I would like lay in my bed and rot is I was looking for quick hits of pleasure, quick hits of dopamine. And I would try to find that through going on Instagram or watching like reality TV shows or sleeping. That was really the main three things that I would do or watch stuff on YouTube. Um, And you guys know, like I talked about how a few weeks ago I watched all of Mila Tequila's um, Jersey Shore videos, which those are awesome. I will say I love them very much. Um, But what I was looking for in all of those moments of rotting was uh, pleasure, right? I was just looking for something to make me feel energized in the moment and going on Instagram or YouTube or watching TV gave me those really quick hits of dopamine that kept me like locked into it. And they were things that I I wanted in the moment because I kept looking for pleasure in that. And I would get like little, little, little hits of pleasure. But what would happen is at the end of the day, I would be so depleted of any sort of dopamine or any sort of pleasure that I would put my phone down and like look around my room and be like, oh my God, I need to touch grass. And I actually feel way worse than I did six hours ago. This sounds kind of hopeless and kind of depressing now that I'm saying it out loud. It it wasn't as terrible as I'm making it sound. Eh, maybe it was. But all, all to say is that I realized in that moment what I was looking for was pleasure, but what I was actually giving myself was pain. <laughs> it, like it, it wasn't helping me at all. 
And in one of the many Huberman, you know, episodes or videos that I watched um, during that time was he speaks about searching for pain rather than pleasure because those cheap thrills of pleasure um, yes they bring dopamine in like very short little hits and little bursts that feel really good in the moment but they just deplete you at ultimately versus seeking out some sort of pain I'm using quotation marks if you're not watching on video pain and that pain um, those pain points are things that actually make you feel good it's things like exercise or cold exposure, um, you know, going outside, like all these things that we already know are true, but are difficult or uncomfortable or quote unquote painful in moments when you just don't feel like doing it. Like when you're so tired and you just want to like lay in bed, you don't want to go to the gym. You don't want to go to the gym when you're tired and you have to, you know, get out of bed and start your day. You don't want to get out of bed and start your day. When you are, I I don't know, like just bored and looking for something to do, I want to go on Instagram. I don't want to like read a book. You know what I mean? Like there's things that I don't want to do, but those things that I don't want to do are actually the things that long-term give me pleasure and give me benefits and momentum and happiness. But those quick things that I do, like go on Instagram or, you know, watch reality TV, like these little things that I do that I'm looking for pleasure or relief or just like my brain to get a break in the moment, they're actually causing me pain down the line because I just, I feel way worse afterwards. So it's funny how when I seek pleasure, I actually get pain. And when I seek pain, I actually get pleasure. Seems super backwards, but this has pretty much been my biggest takeaway that I've learned from you know, rotting for the first two weeks of August. Um, And every time I say that, I feel the need to defend myself, but you guys are all my friends. There's nothing that I need to defend here. Okay. But I just need to acknowledge that, that I feel like I need to defend myself every time I say that, but I don't like, I definitely was like burnt out in the beginning of August for sure. And I feel like I've, I've gotten it under control and I feel a lot better. And I'm now just like speaking from my experience, but Um, that's pretty much what this is today. I'm just going to tell you guys how I personally combated my burnout and exhaustion and fatigue and how seeking pain versus pleasure has actually made me happier and, um, more full of life in the long run, which seems super backwards. And for anyone that might be going through this too, um, whether it's currently or uh, in the future, or you have gone through it in the past, you can always come back to this episode and just be like that friend that's telling you the tough love that sometimes you don't want to hear. But it honestly, it it made me feel a whole lot better. So I just want to share it to you guys as well. Okay, so this is what I've done. This is what's worked for me. Take it or leave it. But this is what I've done with the help of um, Andrew Huberman, Shut the Kale Up. And really those two have been my big motivators and my therapist, my therapist. I love her. Um, So yeah, sounds kind of backwards to combat exhaustion and burnout, but it works and it's helped me feel really amazing and it's really made me feel like myself again. So I want to share that. Um, The first thing that I had to do is really be honest with myself and not set myself up for failure. What I mean by that, I am a morning person, but I am not a rise before the sun morning person. If it is dark out, I want to stay in my bed until the sun is at least up. Like I need some motivation that me and the sun are in this together. So when I say I'm a morning person, I'm like a mid morning person, meaning 630, 645 in the summertime is a great wake up time for me. In the winter, 730 is a great wake up time for me because that's like when the sun is rising for me on the on the East Coast. So it really does sort of switch with when the sun is coming up, not drastically, but in the summertime, like 630, 645, fantastic sweet spot for me. So that's what I've been doing. 
And I also am honest with myself that that's when I will actually wake up 6.30, 6.45. And I'm also honest with myself that I am not productive at the end of the day. If I say to myself, oh, I'll just go to the gym later today, or I will finish that email later today, I, I won't. Like I simply will not do that. And it's because I've pretty much used up all of my willpower earlier in the day, right? In the morning, I've used it. Throughout the day, I've used it. And then at night, I don't have much willpower left. And unless inspiration and motivation strikes, which is, it's on its own timeline, I I can't really count on me being productive in the evening hours. Uh, that's just really not happening. I do it in the morning and I need to use that to my advantage. Now, I'm also very creative in the morning. So I struggle with that and I battle with that internally of like productive, creative. They're not always the same thing. That's a whole different conversation. But I am honest with myself in that I am a morning person. I am productive in the morning. I have willpower in the morning and that willpower leads to momentum that carries me through pretty much the whole day. And then once like 5 p.m. hits, I lose a lot of willpower. I lose a lot of momentum. And that's when I like to decompress. And I feel good about doing that. So I'm honest with myself and everything that I'm about to say, I put in the morning, except for the very first thing, which when I say it, you'll understand. Um, I put in the morning because that is when I just know I am setting myself up for success. This is where you need to be honest with yourself. If you know that you are a night owl, maybe you put these things towards the nighttime. If you know that you really thrive in the middle of the day, Maybe you put the stuff in the middle of the day. Just be honest with yourself and like really be honest with yourself. Don't set yourself up to fail here. Don't set yourself up for something that you know you're not going to be able to accomplish. That's not going to help anyone in these moments. So be honest with yourself and put it in your day where this makes the most sense. So the first thing that has helped me is go to bed early. Now, look, there is like, I think I said this before, but... At this point, I'm like five years into this podcast. I feel like I've said everything before, but there is an episode of the Kardashians where Chloe and Tristan are up working out early in the morning and Scott is like, I can't believe you guys wake up this early. What time do you go to bed? And they said like eight or nine or something like that. And Scott was like, why? And Chloe said, well, what do I have to be up for? So true. Like literally on the weeknights, what? what am I waiting up for? Like nothing is going to happen. Am I just waiting up so I can like watch TV, scroll on Instagram, read my book? Like really what, like what am I staying up for? I have nothing to be up for. When I go to bed early, I just feel so much better. Like last night I went to bed at I think 820 and I felt amazing. Like, you know, I was tired. I wanted to go to bed. I went to bed and I woke up this morning fully rested, sleep score of 92 on my aura ring. Thank you very much. I will take that. And all, all is good and dandy. So for me, going to bed early is a must. And it's something that I prioritize most of my week, like 80% of my week, which is what, like six out of the seven nights, I would say. Um, you know, in the summer, I it will depend if I go to bed later. But normally, I like to go to bed early, like before 9.30. Um, If it's after 930, I feel like I'm going to bed at midnight and I really do feel the difference the next day and that carries with me all day long. So I really do try to go to bed early. It makes a big, big difference. Okay. The second thing that I've done that's helped me combat burnout and now all these things that I'm about to say are things that I don't necessarily want to do. But again, these are pain points that bring me pleasure long term. Like this is this is what makes me feel good when I do all of these things. Um, the next thing is I wake up an extra 15 minutes early. So if I normally would wake up at, let's say seven, I'll wake up at 645 and that's so that I can wake up, sit up in my bed and meditate. I don't get out of bed. I roll over, I open my aura ring, my natural cycles app, and then I open my meditation app. I've used Calm in the past, and right now I'm currently using Open. 
And whatever form of meditation you like to use or you haven't used any and you want to dabble in it, I definitely recommend open. Um, It has made such a difference. For example, a few days ago, there was something that happened um, that would have, you know, kind of caused me to maybe get pissed off or spiral or just get angry or just like annoyed or just like why me mentality or just like pissed off, honestly. But because I meditated early in the morning and the session that I'm in right now with open, it's all about calming the nervous system and it's like a seven day um, course. So I'm on day, I think four of that one. And it's been really awesome. Has what was I saying? Oh yeah. There was like something that happened and it would have pissed me off. But I honestly think because I meditated earlier that morning, I was able to just be really calm about it. Now, something about me that I've noticed is when something unfortunate happens that stresses me out, I have a really hard time letting it go. And I just keep thinking about it and it festers in my mind. And I just... I really have a very hard time letting it go. So the open app has really, this is not sponsored by the way, the open app has really helped me a ton work through letting things go. But also there's a, there's a book. um, It's called why zebras don't get ulcers by Robert M. Sapolsky, Sapolsky, um, which is a really great book. It's on Spotify um, premium. If you guys want to listen to it on the audiobook on Spotify why zebras don't get ulcers. Essentially, it's all about stress management and why it's so important. And doing these 10, 15 minute meditations, I truly think have made a really big difference in just letting things go when unfortunate things happen. Um, Because otherwise, I will just like replay the same scenario over and over and over and over again in my mind. And I just get so worked up about it. And I have to remind myself, like, there's not a saber to the tiger in the room or the situation, like the situation already happened. It's done. It's over. It's resolved. Or even if it's not resolved, which is the worst, but happens if it's not resolved and it's ongoing, like there's literally nothing I can do about it right now. Like I just, I need to let it go because I'm making myself sick and tired and exhausted and like whatever, like I I need to let it go. And that's been hard for me to do at, at times, but because of meditating, I've found it that throughout the day, I'm able to let things go. So those 10, 15 minutes of waking up earlier to meditate have led to ultimately a lot more pleasure and happiness in my life because of it. Um, It's also important to note that, um, where was I? Oh yeah. Like, why am I losing my train of thought? It's important to note too, that when I meditate, sometimes I do get frustrated within the meditation because my mind will spiral or I'll go somewhere and then it's hard to drop back in. And I just want to say like, that's really what the meditation is for. It's for those moments that can be applied outside in the real world, right? Like there are times when things come up and we can't control it, but we can control our, our, our breath or we can control bringing ourselves back into awareness rather than latching onto a thought and taking that thought as reality and running with it because that's just my reality. It's probably not the person's next to me reality or someone that, you know, doesn't even know who I am. Like that's not their reality. You know what I mean? It's really crazy. Like what the mind is and how we think of everything to be true. And if we let thoughts control our brain, then we let thoughts control our identity. And that's really crazy. You guys should read the, um, the untethered soul. If you're interested in that, that's crazy. But anyway, I'll just say meditating can be really frustrating at times, but it's so rewarding and it gives me a lot of pleasure and it really opens up a portal for me throughout the whole day to bring myself back to regulating my nervous system, my thoughts, my breath, and regulating my emotions. It's really wild and it's really important. Small business owners, this one is for you because I have a question. Why is there no banking or financial management tool that are designed for the people like us? Big banks tend to just rip us off. They have a ton of hidden fees and the apps are endlessly stinging us with subscriptions. Can't we just get a streamlined, cost-effective solution designed for us? Well, I finally found one and fittingly, it's called Found. 
Found is the business banking designed for small business owners just like you and I. Designed for small businesses and solo entrepreneurs, Found is, in my opinion, the only financial tool that you will ever need. So say goodbye to switching between multiple finance apps and tools. This all-in-one easy-to-use app lets you manage your financial tasks effortlessly. So you can manage your money, track your spending, invoice clients, and you can even handle your taxes all in one platform so that you can focus on running your business. You'll save hundreds or maybe even thousands of dollars on bank fees, app subscriptions, and that's all because Found has no hidden fees. They have no account maintenance fees, no minimum balances. There's no paperwork or credit checks when signing up. I just really love Found. I found that for me, when it comes to running the business of this podcast manifest, I'm a one woman show over here, right? So I need a place that can track my spending, that can prepare for tax season, and that also makes it really easy for me just to have all of my finances together. Found has been a life saver when it comes to this podcast. What I really like is that I can automatically set money aside for different business goals and I can also control spending with multiple virtual cards. I can save time by automatically tracking and categorizing expenses and this really helps at the end of the year with tax season. And you can also send professional invoices and pay your contractors all for free on the app and they have simplified tax tools to estimate your tax bill for you in real time so you can save what you owe to make tax time really seamless and not as stressful. And if you don't believe me, you can check out some of Found's 30,000 positive customer reviews and see why over 500,000 small businesses like me use Found. So get your business banking working for you. Try Found for free at found.com slash manifest. Sign up for Found for free today at F-O-U-N-D dot com slash manifest. Found is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services are provided by Piermont Bank, member FDIC. Found's core features are free. They also offer an optional paid product, Found Plus. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all, but to match with Indeed. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. So ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so that you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring really easy because all in one platform, I can put out exactly what I'm looking for. I get quality candidates sent right to me and I can then interview and hire them all on one platform. It's super easy. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more that you use Indeed, the better it gets, which is really cool. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash manifest. Just go to Indeed.com slash manifest right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash manifest. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere, from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. What's really cool is that Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, which is 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And you can sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Now, when I was selling the Manifest Planners, I was using Shopify and it made me selling to you guys so easy because I never knew how to sell a product out there, but Shopify took 
all of my worries away immediately once I started using the platform. And what's really cool is now that I know like the back end of Shopify, every time I go to shop on some of my favorite brands that are huge, I notice that they're on Shopify and it's with good reason because Shopify is literally the best out there. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. They are the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, their award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash manifest, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash manifest now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash manifest. So wake up 15 extra an extra 15 minutes early and meditate. You don't even have to get out of your bed. The next thing that I do is hydrate. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Drink water. I always have an Awala water bottle next to my bed. And normally in the morning, it's just plain water. Um, I will chug it and then I'll go downstairs and put some sort of electrolyte drink in my water bottle that's in like now a brand new full water bottle. Normally, Element is my favorite go-to. I love salty water. I I don't know. My favorite flavor right now has been the citrus one. Um, It's like orange and it's so good. But I also love the mango chili. That one is so, so, so good. I also love liquid IV. Um, I like the sugar-free liquid IV. That one always tastes really good. Um, The peach one is absolutely delicious. You could also just put plain Celtic salt into your water. Um, or you could also just drink plain water, but all's to say I hydrate as much as I can in the morning. Um, it's not fun and uh, it's not always comfortable and I'm not always like super thirsty. I'm not always like hungry for water. Um, it's not always what I want, but I feel a hell of a lot better afterwards. And that's what the point of everything that I'm talking about is. And like I said, I do all of these things every day. And it makes a really big difference. Next up is morning sunlight and movement. So I try to habit stack these. Now, there are some days that I don't feel like walking around with getting in morning sunlight. And I will say like morning sunlight is very important. But when I do have it stack it with movement, I notice a bigger difference and I feel better down the line. Now, I do want to make a note though, when I say things like I don't always feel like doing movement, I still try to do it anyway, because it's the things that I don't want to do that ultimately bring me pleasure. If I do the things I want to do all the time, like doom scroll on Instagram, watch a reality show, that's like what leads to displeasure and pain at the end of it. So doing the things that I don't want to do is so important to ultimately feel better, which is so crazy and so backwards. And I know it's not what you want to hear, but it's the truth. I'm sorry. I have to tell you the truth. That's the truth. Okay. So morning sunlight and movement, I have it stack them. I make them one and the same. So I wake up, meditate, I drink my water, and then I get up and I change and I go outside and I view sunlight and I get my steps in. What I've been doing recently with my steps is I will run one mile to the end of the island where I live in, you know, at the Jersey Shore. Um, I'll run to the end of the island and then I will get on the beach and then I will walk back to my house. So it's like a two mile loop that I do in the mornings and it's a great way to get steps in. It's a great way to get sunlight in and it's also a really fun way for me just to get some endorphins flowing through the run, some steps in. I walk barefoot on the beach so I get some grounding in and I get some sunlight flooded in my eyes and it feels really, really good on my eyes, my nervous system, my feet, my brain, my body, my soul it feels really good. That in and of itself, like I feel electric when I'm done that. And that's really what I need. Like that, that's the key right there. The morning sunlight with my one mile run out, my walk back, I'm good to go. Like that carries on through the whole day. I'm not kidding. I feel like a superhuman when I do that. I feel so much better. And if you're going to do anything, that's what you should do. Morning sunlight and movement together, have it stack it. You're good to go. Now, what I like to do 
Um, I like to kind of bring this up a notch. It depends on the day of what I'm feeling, but lately I've been so obsessed with two songs and I have them on repeat as I do my mile run and then my walk back. It's My Kink is Karma by um, Chapel Roan and The Bolter by Taylor Swift. I don't know why those two songs together. That's that's my religion, like for real. Like those two songs, I can't get enough of. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been talking about it every day because I can't get enough of it. Running on at the beach to My Kink is Karma is a euphoric experience that I think everyone in their life should experience at some point or another. It's so incredible and it truly gives me life. So I have to thank my my girls for that one, but it's been wonderful and I love it. So yes, I just listened to those two songs on repeat for about 30 minutes every single morning and it's wonderful. There is a coffee shop along the way. So if I wanted to stop for coffee on my walk back, I can. Um, I don't always, I have sometimes for a fun reward, but I do want to touch on coffee a little bit later on in the episode, but for now, just put a pin in that, but just know that morning sunlight and movement is unfortunately the key to, to happiness and momentum for the whole day. And something else that I want to say, everything that I'm talking about You have to redo it every 24 hours. This is not something that you can do one day a week and then you're good for the whole week. Unfortunately, you do have to do this every 24 hours. Your circadian rhythm will reset itself and you do have to do this again tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that and the day after that. It's got to be an everyday thing. If you want to feel good, you got to put in the work to feel good because otherwise if you don't put in the work to feel good, it's not naturally going to come every single day. And there are days that you don't want to do this, but it's how bad do you want to feel good? Like when you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, you're going to know and you're going to say to yourself like, all right, I'm, I'm over it. I want to feel good. This is what I'm going to do. Maybe that's what I'll tell you the episode. When you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. Maybe. I'll think about it. Anyway. um, Yeah. You got to do this every day. Every 24 hours. I know you don't want to hear that. If you are, you know, kind of like in the thick of it or going through it. Or like you're looking for something to make you feel good. It sounds like a lot of work and a lot of effort. But trust me. It feels so much better to be to be active. It feels so much better to be happy. It feels so much better to be doing things that make you feel good. And when you do it every day, this becomes your medicine. This becomes something that you crave. So, and it, it only takes like two or three days to, to crave this. It really does. Once you taste how good it feels, like you don't want to live any other way. Like, trust me. <laughs> it feels good. It feels really good. Okay, moving on. Um, after my morning sunlight and movement, that is when I will then go to my studios. Now this, I just wanted to include it because it's part of my morning routine and it's part of like the things that I do to make me feel good. But it's also just me saying like, this is when I would insert work. Okay. Now in the fall, I think this step will just go away entirely because my work will just be reframed to a little bit later on in the morning. However, in order to be authentic to myself, I did want to give an honorable mention. Shout out to my studios. I love you stride. Um, so yeah, I will go for my little run, walk, come home, and then I will like quickly change. And I still stay in workout clothes, but I just change out of my sweaty. So I sweat a lot when I run. So I change out of my sweaty top um, and then I change it into different workout clothes and then I go to the studio. Okay. And then I'm there for like, it ranges anywhere from like a half hour to two hours. It really just depends on the day. Okay. But I don't want to say that. So I go to the studio. Moving on. Um, 
Then I exercise, okay? So what I did in the morning, the morning sunlight and movement, I don't count that as an exercise. I count that as movement, which is why I just do the mile run because it's it's nothing that I can't do. Like that's something sustainable that I can do every day. The mile walk back, again, that's sustainable. I can do that every day. It's not draining. It's not tiring. It's not like I'm pushing myself to a max effort that I can't maintain No, like it's just simple and it's a way to get my body moving and to make me feel good. Then I exercise. My preferred method of exercising currently is strength training, yoga, or Pilates. One of those three. Lately, it's been a lot of strength training, like weight lifting, which has been really nice. And I've definitely been enjoying that. Um, which by the way, uh, I got a few messages on Instagram asking if I could share my strength training plan. I hired a personal trainer who has written me plans virtually. I will leave her, um, Instagram in the description of the show notes. So if you guys want to message her and get a strength training plan from her, you can, um, I know her personally, so she was like, do you want to do it in person or virtual? And I just said virtual. Um, But she just like writes plans and she's fantastic. So I will leave her uh, handle in the show notes. You can just DM her and say that you want to, you know, work with her as a client or something. Um, And she can write you a plan too. But it's been really, really great to strength train because, um, one, I feel myself getting stronger Two, it's a nice, like escape from my day. Her workouts aren't too long. Like the longest one that's ever taken me was like 45 minutes, which is really, really nice. So they're not super long. It's a really great, uh, time. And I've been able to just like disconnect from work and life and just put music in and strength train. And that's been really, really awesome. So I exercise. Exercise is the thing that I don't always want to do. Okay. I don't always want to do it. And so funny because I own fitness studios. Ha ha ha. That doesn't always mean I want to exercise all day long. Okay. But here's what I know. I never regret an exercise session. I never regret a workout. Every single time that I strength train, take a yoga class, practice or take a Pilates class, take a spin class. I never regret it. I always feel incredible afterwards. And that all comes back to you. When you do the thing you don't want to do, you feel better afterwards versus when I always do the things I want to do, I don't always feel so great afterwards. So when I exercise and I get the endorphins running through me, I just feel so much better. So exercise. I know you don't want to hear me say it. I know we hear it all the time. And I know you're looking for me to tell you a secret of this is how you can feel better without exercising. This is how you can feel better without doing the things that you already know deep down that you should do. I'm not here to tell you a secret. I'm not here to give you a hack. I'm not here to tell you what you don't already know. Unfortunately, the things that we don't want to do are the things that make us feel better. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't make the rules, but I have been following them and they have been helping immensely. Okay, moving on. Exercise. After I exercise, I take a shower. Now, I am not going to sit here and lie to you guys and say that I will cold plunge afterwards because I don't. Okay, I don't. I feel like it's coming, unfortunately, but it's not hit me yet. Now, here's what I will say. Taking an outdoor shower is euphoric. It is. It just is. Now that won't last forever because the summer is winding down. I do have to go back to, you know, my home that does not have an outdoor shower, but my home here at the beach does have an outdoor shower and there is nothing better than showering outside. So if you have access to an outdoor shower, do it. If you do not, don't worry because I won't either. And then I will, I will also miss it. But anyway, I take a shower and I take a normal shower. Okay. And then the last 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah. I make it a little cold. I make it a little cold. I'm not cold plunging in my shower. I'm not doing that, but I am making it a little cold to where I'm like, Oh, this is cold. This is chilly. I don't love this. 
Unfortunately, I do feel much better afterwards. Yes, unfortunately, I do. I I didn't want to be the one to say it. I don't want to be the one that's like, you got a cold plunge. Unfortunately, you do feel better afterwards. Yes, that is true. So again, seeking pain brings brings pleasure, unfortunately. So yeah, um, I do feel better afterwards. I am a lot happier and uh, I do get a good rush of dopamine. I wish I had a secret to tell you guys that you don't have to do this, but that is the truth. I, I do feel better. And it, it all of this is to say, though, it's not freezing cold. It's not super long. It's like 30 seconds to a minute. And um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry to say. And then the last thing that I do is I have breakfast. Now, breakfast, what I eat for breakfast changes. I have an episode where I list out a couple of breakfast ideas. Um Pretty much the main thing that I focus on with breakfast is getting in protein and fiber. So I look for some sort of fruit and eggs or a smoothie with protein powder in it, something like that, or yogurt and fruit like that. Um, I just like to prioritize fiber and protein for my first meal, and that makes me feel really good, and it's been great. Lately, I've been eating a scramble with onions, bell peppers, two whole eggs cooked in butter, delicious. And I have a side of avocado that I eat with that and some form of fruit. Lately, it's been peaches because they are in season and they are delicious. And I drizzle hot honey over all of that because I love hot honey. And that's been my breakfast lately. Um, And now that I've done all of that, I have momentum from that entire list of morning routines. And like I said, I do that every 24 hours, every single morning. I do that every single day. And the reason that I'm able to do this is because I incorporate what I have to do into this routine. And the thing that I have to do into this routine is go to the studio. If you have a kid and a kid goes on the bus, maybe you can incorporate getting your child on the bus into this routine. If you have a dog, can you incorporate getting your dog out for a walk and feeding your dog in your routine? It's about incorporating the things that you have to do in your life into your routines so that they are not only sustainable, but that they give the longevity that you need, right? That you're able to do this every 24 hours, even if you're home, even if you're on vacation. Like if you want to feel good on vacation, you got to do the things that make us feel good. And it's crazy that the things that make us feel good take work because we think they shouldn't take work, but it does. Like we are complex yet simple. Okay. Make that make sense. Individuals. And we need systems and routines and protocols to make us feel good every single day. And it takes work to do that. I wish it didn't. I really wish it didn't, but unfortunately it does. And I'm here to tell you that I don't have a hack. I don't have a secret, but like these things that we all know intuitively to make us feel good that we don't always want to do are the things that make us feel good that we don't always want to do. So anyway, after I do all of this, I then have momentum to carry me on through the rest of the day to do the things again that maybe I don't want to do, um, like have difficult conversations or do um, admin work or do, I don't know, errands. But it also gives me momentum to do the things that I do want to do, like creative work or um, hang out with friends if it's a weekend or paint. I don't know. Just like things that I do want to do. This gives me the momentum and the motivation, the discipline and the inspiration to do both the things I want to do and I don't want to do. And the things that I don't want to do, I have to do. And then I'm always happy when they're done. So either way, I end up happy when I do these things every single day. It's truly a win-win. There is no losing in this scenario when you set yourself up for success. I notice a huge, huge difference when I do this in my life. I just feel so much better. Now, like this whole routine that I just said, waking up, meditating, hydrating, morning sunlight, movement, studios, exercise, shower, breakfast. That takes me about four to five hours. Like if I'm waking up at 6.30, I'll be done this by 11.30. So that's five hours right there, right? 
Now that's because, like I said, I'm putting the studio in the middle of it. If I'm taking that out of it, about two to three hours, right? Like if I'm waking up at, let's say 7 a.m. and I want to do all of this stuff and I want to hydrate, if I want to wake up an extra 15 minutes early, meditate, hydrate, morning sunlight, movement, exercise, shower, breakfast. If I'm waking up at seven to do that, I'll be done by 10. And that's like, what, three hours? So yeah, it it's time that you're carving into yourself. But I can also tell you what, I found like nine hours every day last week, or not last week, in the beginning of the month to doom scroll. Yep. Yep. So if it really matters to you, you will find the time to feel good. When you are sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, you will do anything to feel good. And this, this is what works for me, for me, for me, for me, for me. Um, another thing that I noticed throughout the day, you got to read. Okay. Reading is something that I don't want for me anyway, to actively engage in because I find that when my mind just wants a break from working or just like existing in my own mind, when I just want to break from myself or from the world or from whatever, reading is not something that I really want to do because it's like an active thing that my mind has to do, right? Like I have to read every word and I have to be engaged in the story And honestly, it takes me a minute. Like it takes my mind a little bit to really quiet my mind down and not wander. It's almost like an active break. It's like when people say take a rest day and then they say go for like a a 60 minute walk. It's like, well, hang on, (laughs) hang on. It's like that with reading with my brain. It's just like, okay, I'm, I'm taking a break, but I have to like do work. No, thanks. I'd rather just scroll on Instagram. Here's the difference. When I scroll on Instagram, I feel like shit afterwards. When I read a book, I get lost in the book. Eventually, I get lost in the book and I leave feeling so much better than when I started. So much better. I get a similar feeling when I paint my watercolors. My friend Kelly bought me a watercolor painting book and I feel so much better when I'm done painting and when I'm done doing watercolors or doing anything creative. Like even lately on my Instagram stories, I've just been just experimenting a little bit more, playing around, like editing in CapCut and just being like a bit more creative than I have been in the past. And that's just because it's been fun for me. It's been something to do other than scroll on Instagram or watch YouTube videos or watch reality TV. And I look, I know I love reality TV. I love reality TV, but unfortunately I don't always feel the best when I'm done watching housewives, especially lately housewives lately. I'm sorry if you guys can hear, um, the lawnmowers that just started going off randomly. Um, Housewives Lately, the new production, they are trying to make so much drama that it's actually becoming not fun to watch. It's too dramatic. It's too toxic. And I can't even believe it to be entertaining. Like, it's just really not fun anymore. But anyway, I digress. Um, Reading has been something that has helped me tremendously tremendously. And I'm reading the Akatar series. I actually won't shut up about it. Um, I'm on a court of wings and ruin right now. Mm, I love it. Um, but reading has helped me a lot. It does take me like five minutes to really get into reading. But then when I do, my brain does just get lost and I'm able to just really get, get trapped in this, you know, the world of Prithian and Resand and fair darling and that's all I'm going to say and like whatever. I just love it. I just love it. So it's been really nice just to be like wrapped up in another world. But again, reading is something that I don't always want to do. I actually very rarely want to pick up a book and read, but it's the act of choosing to read over doom scrolling. I don't feel good when I'm done doom, doom scrolling. I always feel good when I'm done reading. And that feels good. It feels good to feel good. Um, a few more pain points that lead me to pleasure, which are, it's my way of saying things that I don't want to do 
that when I am in the middle of doing them, I feel better doing it. And when they're done, I'm really glad that I did them and I feel a lot better. Cleaning my room or cleaning my apartment, um, when I was, you know, done my few weeks of laying in bed, I looked around and my room was a mess and I was like, oh God. So I cleaned my room. I felt so much better when I did it. And ever since then, I just walk in my room and it's, I'm just happier. Like it's brighter, it's clean, it's tidy. I just feel so much better. So I'm really glad that I did that. It was something I didn't want to do. And I'm still happy that I did it weeks later. Laundry. When my laundry backs up, I am like, oh God, what am I going to wear? Do I have any clean underwear? Like it's just, it's just like, it's just pain, right? But doing the laundry sometimes just feels so annoying or overwhelming. Or for me, it's really putting away the laundry like that. Like all that clean clothes just sit in the laundry basket for a week until I have to do my laundry again. And then I'm like, okay, now I have to really put it away because I need the laundry basket. When I just do it, when I don't want to do it and get ahead of it and put it all away, I feel so much better. Again, something I don't want to do that I do it and I end up feeling so much better rather than avoiding it because that brings me momentary pleasure when I avoid it because I don't have to, you know, confront it, do it right now. But in the long run, it just brings me discomfort and pain. And it's just like, oh God, because it's lingering, right? It's like that lingering, like, I know I have to do this. I know I have to do this, but I don't want to. Trust me, just do it. Cooking is another thing. Um, I don't always want to do it, especially when I'm hungry. I definitely don't want to do it. But having nourishing food feels so good and it's fun to cook. Like I do enjoy it. Like when I'm in the middle of cooking, it's the only thing that matters. I'm not worried about what's on my phone, what's on the TV, what book I'm reading, what's on Instagram. Like nothing else matters other than what the food is in front of me that I'm cooking, what I'm currently doing, and then what step am I going to do next in this recipe. It's, it's really fun and my brain gets like very lost in it and I enjoy that very much. And lastly, a long shower. Um, I don't always want to do an everything shower, but when I do, it feels incredible. In the moment, it feels incredible. And afterwards, it feels incredible. Not only am I super clean, but I just spent the last 30 minutes nourishing my, nurturing myself. Um, and then, you know, I'll get out of the shower. I'll blow out my hair. I'll put coconut oil on my body. I'll put lotion on my body. And I just feel really, really clean. And that feels really, really good. So again, something that I don't necessarily always want to do, like the startup, the catalyst of doing that isn't always there. Like that motivation to do something isn't always there, but I just feel so much better afterwards. It's that the initial pain point that just brings you so much pleasure in the end. Now, I've noticed a negative and really tired feeling when I do these things, okay? When I stay up too late or when I don't sleep well enough or when I don't sleep well or I don't sleep enough. In the moment, it's fun to stay up late, but long term, it's never fun. That moment that moment of pleasure that I'm seeking out always brings me pain. Not fun. So staying up too late, not fun for me not getting good sleep, not fun for me. I always, I just want to feel better when I, I always just feel better when I sleep earlier. Next thing I've said this whole episode, doom scrolling in the moment. I I just want to like rot for a minute, like let my brain just like rot. But when I'm done, I always feel worse. I never feel better. I never feel better. Never, never, ever, 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 ever do I ever come off Instagram and I'm like, you know what? I feel so much better than I did when I, that's never come out of my mouth. So doom scrolling in the moment, it's all I want, but actually it will just make me feel a hell of a lot worse when I don't view morning sunlight. Oh God. Okay. Here's the tea with morning sunlight that I forgot to mention. When you do it the first day, you might feel like good, right? And then you're going to do it the second day and you're going to feel good, probably better than yesterday. The third day is when you feel the benefits of it. Okay. The 48 hours after you do it for the first time is when you really realize like, oh, I'm happier. My circadian rhythm is better. I'm sleeping better. I overall, like I'm just happier. I have more motivation to like do things in my life. When I don't view morning sunlight, I not only feel it the day of, but I feel it two days later too. So not doing it for one day throws off 
yes, this day, but also my future days, which is crazy. Um, you, you feel the effects of it 48 hours later. So it is so important to get outside and view sunlight, even if it's overcast, if it's raining and it's like, you know, a hurricane outside, I get it, but just know like it's going to make you feel a little bit groggy for that day. And for like two days later, you can get back on track, just go out and do it the next day. Um, but you will notice a big difference. Don't say I didn't warn you. Unfortunately, that is true for me unfortunately. Um, another thing when I don't exercise, I feel worse in the moment. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I feel good not exercising. I don't want to do it right now. So I'm just like, not going to do it. I'm just going to like give myself this pleasure and not do it (laughs) wrong. I always feel worse when I don't just go do it. Even when you don't want to do it, just go do it. Just go do it. Just go do it. Um, Oh, unfortunately this one is true. When I eat a lot of a, a, a heavy carb meal in the middle of the day, sandwiches, rice, pasta in the middle of the day. Unfortunately, that does not make me feel my best. It's because I just get really tired after I'm, I'm done eating that. That's not to say I don't eat it because I do. But again, it doesn't make me feel good. The things that do make me feel good are the things that I don't want to eat like protein or vegetables. I know, I know you don't want to hear me say it. I know, I know, but it's true. It's the truth. Again, this isn't to say that I don't eat this stuff because I do, I do. I eat it, but I will. Now I try to eat it at night because I know that if it makes me sleepy, I actually sleep a lot better when I have carbs at night. So I have pasta at night, risotto, bread, like any, really anything that I want. I don't restrict myself period. But I just, I'm strategic now about when I eat it. So I'll typically eat like three hours before I go to bed. So if I go to bed at nine, I'll try to have dinner by like six. Um, If I go to bed a little bit earlier, 530, I like an early dinner. It just, it works for me and it sits a lot better with my body. Um, And I like it and it, it just feels good. So yeah, I'll still eat the carbs. Don't get me wrong. I still eat the carbs. I just do it a little bit later in the day. And then remember how I said, let's put a pin in coffee, taking the pin out. Let's talk about it. Okay. The advice from Andrew Huberman is if you're going to have coffee, have coffee 90 minutes after you wake up. Unfortunately, he is right. Unfortunately, he is right. Today, I woke up. I had a pretty early morning I had to get to. So I had my coffee little bit earlier this morning than normal. And as I drank it, I said, I'm probably going to have that mid afternoon crash. And I hope I don't because it's a Friday. I want to go to the beach today. I have to podcast today. I just want to feel good today. So I, I hope I don't have that mid afternoon crash, but if I do, I'll deal with it and all will be fine. Well, don't you know, I did feel it. It came around like noon and I was like, man, I'm really tired. Man, I just really want to go to bed. Man, all I want to do is lay down and scroll on Instagram. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. I'm really glad I didn't. What I did instead was plan out this podcast. I had no idea what to talk about today. And I was like, I should honestly just talk about how I've been feeling and what I've been doing to feel better. Um, and I'm really glad I did because I, I love this episode. But so I planned out this episode and then I read my book and I felt so much better. I felt energized. I felt alive. I felt chatty. I felt so much better. But all is to say, there is some truth to Huberman's prolong your caffeine intake, like wait 90 minutes after you wake up to drink coffee. There is truth to that. You do feel a lot better. You do prevent that afternoon crash. There is science with it. I think it has to do with something like it bonds to something that we have in our brain. I don't know. You can listen to him. He explains it way better than I ever will. But, and I think I've brought up Huberman like at least 20 times in this episode today. So that's, that's, that's a lot. But anyway, um, unfortunately when I do drink coffee before 90 minutes, 
of waking, I do experience it in a mid-afternoon crash. And even when I drink coffee, period, I do get some form of crash. Whenever I have matcha, I feel so much better. Um, and I, I would love to not drink coffee at all. I would love to just completely switch over to matcha and tea. Um, but there, there are days like today when the weather is crisp and I want pumpkin in my, in my coffee and I have that. And then I get an afternoon crash there. We have it again. Momentary pleasure brings me pain later on. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? It's always, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. Right. Isn't that the saying? Anyway, those are things that I notice that I do when I want like an escape that I, I frequently do, um, that are like little acts of self love that I tell myself like, Oh, you don't need to exercise today. You're really tired. Well, then I feel like shit afterwards, or I feel, I don't feel like my best all day long, or it's like, Oh, you know what? You just want to brain break, like just scroll on Instagram. It's like, okay, well I actually come off Instagram feeling worse than I went on it. But like, thank you brain for thinking that that would help. It's not what really does help is reading a book or painting or going for a walk or going to sit on the beach and just looking at the ocean, calling a friend, um, things like that, like things that you don't want to do in the moment actually do make you feel a hell of a lot better. And it seems counterintuitive, but it really, really does work. So the things that I do to quickly seek pleasure actually make me feel worse. And the things that I don't want to do that I make myself do make me feel so much better for so much longer. And it's so worth it. So if I could give you any advice, it's to do the things that you don't want to do and you will thank yourself for it. It helps. It works. I know you were probably wishing I would give you a secret or a hack of something that you don't already know within. But if anything, I'm just here to reinforce that like you know what to do. And even if you don't want to do it, just try it helps so much and you you'll feel good and you'll thank yourself and there's no better feeling than feeling good from within honestly so I hope this episode helps I love you guys so much and it's it's helped me if anything else this is my own advice that has worked for me and it makes me feel alive and happy and um, I feel very much so recovered from the exhaustion and that burnout feeling that I had um, in the beginning of the month. So yeah, I love you guys. Thank you for listening. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Happy Labor Day. Probably will not talk to you guys until after Labor Day. So have a great holiday next Monday. And I love you guys. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye guys. Small business owners, this one is for you because I have a question. Why is there no banking or financial management tool that are designed for the people like us? Big banks tend to just rip us off. They have a ton of hidden fees and the apps are endlessly stinging us with subscriptions. Can't we just get a streamlined, cost-effective solution designed for us? Well, I finally found one and fittingly, it's called Found. Found is a business banking designed for small business owners just like you and I. Designed for small businesses and solo entrepreneurs, Found is, in my opinion, the only financial tool that you will ever need. So say goodbye to switching between multiple finance apps and tools. This all-in-one, easy-to-use app lets you manage your financial tasks effortlessly. So you can manage your money, track your spending, invoice clients, and you can even handle your taxes all in one platform so that you can focus on running your business. You'll save hundreds or maybe even thousands of dollars on bank fees, app subscriptions, and that's not because Found has no hidden fees. They have no account maintenance fees, no minimum balances. There's no paperwork or credit checks when signing up. I just really love Found. I found that for me, when it comes to running the business of this podcast manifest, I'm a one woman show over here, right? So I need a place that can track my spending, that can prepare for tax season, and that also makes it really easy for me just to have all of my finances together. Found has been a life saver when it comes to this podcast. What I really like is that I can automatically set money aside for different business goals and I can also control spending with multiple virtual cards. I can save time by automatically tracking and categorizing expenses. And this really helps at the end of the year with tax season. And you can also send professional invoices and pay 
your contractors all for free on the app. And they have simplified tax tools to estimate your tax bill for you in real time so you can save what you owe to make tax time really seamless and not as stressful. And if you don't believe me, you can check out some of Founds of 30,000 positive customer reviews and see why over 500,000 small businesses like me use Found. So get your business banking working for you. Try Found for free at found.com slash manifest. Sign up for Found for free today at found.com slash manifest. Found is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services are provided by Piermont Bank, member FDIC. Found's core features are free. They also offer an optional paid product, Found Plus. 